Baines Mitchell, and Gwendolyn Burford. He is the fifth oldest of six siblings. He received Jesus as his Savior at the age of 19 and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Michael answered the call into ministry in 1996 under the late Pastor John L. Tolliver at St. Peter Pentecostal Church of God in Christ. He was ordained an elder in 2000 under Pastor Sylvester and Rita Johnson of New Life Family Worship Center here in Chicago, Illinois. Pastor, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me make sure I get the right lane. There we go. Pastor Michael <laughs> is a teacher and student. I should have worn my glasses. Thank you, Jesus. And student of the Word of God. Pastor Michael is married to Prophetess Makila. Amen. Yeah. They have three beautiful children. Malcolm, Miracle, and Joshua, and a beautiful daughter in love, Felicia, and one beautiful granddaughter, Alani. They have a passion for teaching, training, and imparting in the areas of prayer, marriage, and family. Pastors Michael and Makiba have had the privilege of leading prayer summits throughout Chicagoland area for many years. Their desire is to equip the people of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Equip the people of God to develop an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ through prayer. Amen? amen. Pastor Michael leads brother to brother an all men's prayer group every Friday morning at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Amen. They are the senior leaders of Christ-centered Kingdom Ministries Incorporated. Yeah. They have been intercessors for over 20 years in the body of Christ. Can we say amen, amen to the men and women of God? I thank Pastor Michael Burford for coming to share with us today, and I want us to receive him with a hearty amen. 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 Praise God. Thank each of you. Thank you, uh, Pastor James and Prophetess Jewel. Uh, it is honor. It is an honor and a privilege just to be in the house Amen. of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. It's always good to be in God's house and bless you guys. Those of you that's watching by way of uh, streaming live and in living color. Amen. That's what I always say when I open up at church. We are live and in living color, and so thank God for that. Uh, I want to give God the honor and the praise for my first, my last, my everything, uh, my wife. And if I talk about her, uh, I'm not going to stay here and teach. I'm going to leave with her. <laughs> Those of you that marry, you understand what I'm talking about. Those of you that wait, wait. <laughs> wait till your change come, as the songwriter used to sing. All right, we're going to pray and then get into the word of God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we just thank you for this time, God, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this moment. Lord God, we just pray, Father God, for these, your people. God, we ask, God, that you would just begin to bless, Father God. We thank you, God, that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to our churches on today. Father, we thank you, Father God, that your word shall go forth with clarity and simplicity to the end that we all may believe, God. It will go forth, oh God, unhindered and uninterrupted in Jesus' name. Now, God, we pray, God, that you will open up our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Well, if you have your Bibles and or your electronic devices, we're going to go to the scripture. And we're talking on today about men of righteousness. Amen. Men of righteousness. And I am a teacher. And so me being a teacher, I have to give you some definitions. Yeah, and so amen. we have to understand what righteousness is or what righteousness means. Amen. And so what is righteousness? Righteousness is actually uh, the act in accord with divine or moral law. That's one of the definitions of righteousness. Also morally right or justifiable. I remember I was at work and this gentleman came up and he was coming to see his uh, probation officer. Uh, and so uh, he asked me a question about this other particular officer that he was going to see. He was like, is he righteous? <laughs> 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 
And so that's a slang term, meaning is that individual uh, genuine or excellent? I'm like, oh yeah, he righteous. And so he wanted to make sure that this individual was going to be fair with him. And so he said, is he righteous? And so I thought that I got a, a good chuckle out of that, a good laugh, uh, uh, him just asking that. And then uh, uh, one of the things also that uh, righteousness is, righteousness is integrity. It means integrity. It means virtue, purity of life. Rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. I like that. I'm going to read that again. Righteousness is integrity. And we know integrity actually means the quality of being honest. And so God wants us to have integrity. At my job, we do this thing that's called the uh, integrity uh, system where we have a snack shack. And at the snack shack, you're supposed to get a snack, but you have to leave the money for whatever the item you got. And so they're believing that you're gonna work or, or live in the honor system and you're gonna have integrity and you're gonna leave the dollar or whatever amount it is. And so God wants us, that's a part of righteousness, God wants us to be integral. And it also means a virtue, a particular moral excellence. Uh, and virtue is, is actually synonymous with, uh, as we're talking about men and, and, and our, our, our service on today, it means manly strength or courage. Yes. Virtue actually means manly strength or courage. It also means valor. And valor is courage or bravery. And so it's like, you know, you got to have, as a man, you got to have courage for your household. You got to have bravery for your household. You know, if something is going on, remember uh, this one gentleman, me and uh, Prophet McKeever, we was uh, on the bus one day. And you know, he, you know, they, they changed the transfers. I'm gonna date myself. We used to have the super transfers. Some of you guys may be too young to know about the super transfers. The super transfers, you could ride the bus and the trains all day long. And what we used to do when we were growing up uh, with the super transfers, we would actually, once we were done with it, we would pass it on to somebody else. And so you know what, Pookie, uh, 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 Chico, and Ray Ray them, and whoever else, uh, you know, I, I think it was CTA that messed it up for us all, to tell you the truth, but anyhow, uh, uh, they decided that, you know what, you know, you can't, you know, do super transfers anymore. So then they had this, you know, where we could just put this little slim card in and, you know. And so this guy, we was on a bus, this guy grabbed Makiba's car from my hand. And so I'm from 63rd Street, so I was about to, you know, I, I love the Lord and he heard my cry and he pitied out my groans. But I was about to go 63rd Street on him because you don't take somebody's transfer. Now, he was trying to show her how to do it. Now, although I did not know that's what he was doing, and so my wife being my wife, like, wait, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, because she saw in my eyes, like, he was about to get rocked. Because you don't take something from a man's wife and don't think that he's not going to have valor and just, you know what I'm saying, I don't care how big you is, I know what to do to you. It does not matter how big you are. The bigger they are, the harder they will fall. And so I'm like, and so I had to calm, I had to bring it down a thousand, I had to calm down because it's like, listen, I'm gonna protect my woman with my life and that's what we must do as men. We must protect our wives, we must protect our families, we must protect our communities with our lives. And so we must be righteous, we must have valor. It also says that, Righteousness is purity of life. And so we must be pure in our life. We must have purity of life. This is a prayer that I often pray as a man, and you can pray it whether you're a man or a woman, but God, uh, uh, according to Job, he says that God, that I will have, uh, 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 God, make a covenant with my eyes, not the lust after a woman. He said those words. He said that I'm making a covenant with my eyes. You know, the Bible talks, tells us in Timothy, he says that I will look on the older women as mothers and the younger women with sisters. That's a prayer that you can pray, you know, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, that God will help you to see because as men, all of us know that as men, we are visual creatures. And so we see something like I saw Makiba and I thought she was very beautiful. I still think she's very beautiful. And so when I saw her, I wanted to get to know her. You know what I'm saying? You know, I want to holler at her. I want to talk to her. I want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, how you doing? How your mama them doing? You know, how everybody is doing it. So I wanted to talk to her and get to know her. And so Makiba said, you know, to me, she said, uh, uh, brother Jesus is number one in my book. And I said, I said, Jesus, my boy, I'll be number two. I 
didn't have a problem with Jesus. I'm like, I could be number two to Jesus. Why not? And so she gave me one of those looks, Pastor. It's like, if you don't get them away from around here, you know, like those looks that your wife can give you or your mama can give you, and you're like, man, you know, mama give you that look like, boy, if you don't sit down, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. Yeah, yeah, some of you guys may not know that. You know, yeah, my grandma used to say, boy, I will beat you till your nose bleed and then beat it from bleed. See, that's old school. You guys right now, some of you guys that's young, y'all don't know what whoopings are. See, we got whoopings with stitching cords and then we had to go outside and get a switch. Now, if you went outside and you got a twig and your mama had to go outside and get a, a, a switch for you, she coming back with a branch. And so your best bet is to go out there and go ahead and get that switch and, and get it over with. You know what I'm saying? And so also it means correctness of thinking and feeling and acting. Correctness of thinking and feeling and acting. And so we must have a, a correct way of thinking. Uh, we must have a correct way of acting. And it's just like, you know, when you go outside or various things and, you know, I, I grew up in a generation where it was that it takes a village to raise a family and so when I was growing up uh, back in the day not too long ago I'm older than what I look and so they used to you know people could whoop you and then tell your mom and daddy that they whoop you then you got another whooping when you got home with your mom and daddy see that was the age in which I grew up in and so it was like they, they wanted to make sure that Michael was out there doing something or saying something or Michael was cussing it's like no 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 now I know your grandmama and your daddy didn't raise you better than that and so they would tell they had their phone numbers and different things like that and so I believe we need to get back into that way of community one for another that we will watch out for each other that we will watch out for each other's children like no son no daughter don't do that don't don't say that don't speak like that you know and just be able to help them and nowadays it's like you know if you say something to somebody they want to fight it's like no no I'm trying to help you you know what I'm saying and, and just trying to help you and see it in a different way and so I love this let's go to uh, uh, Genesis 15 uh, chapter 15 verse number 6 chapter 15 verse number 6 and this is actually the first mention of righteousness and it says as follows it says and he believed in the Lord and he counted to him for righteousness and this was God talking about Abraham and he says that he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness and so uh, uh, somebody said this in the movie I am a movie buff and so in the movie the uh, international they said this he said character is easier kept than recovered <laughs> character is easier kept than recovered because it when when we get outside of our character, when we get outside of righteousness and we get outside of those the correct way of thinking and, and feeling and uh, uh, being a person of purity in our lives, uh, it takes some time to recover those things. Man, uh, if David was here, you could ask him when he did what he did with Bathsheba and all the hell that he went through, all the chaos that he went through as a result of that. And so, it, I mean, there's consequences. Even when you well, even when you ask God, like, Lord, forgive me of my sins, Lord, come into my heart, and all those things. And if we do something, there is consequences. David had experienced consequences for his sins. And, and you and I will also experience some consequences for the things that we say and the things that we do. And sometimes, even as it relates to how we are thinking or, you know, how sometimes people can speak without speaking. Yep. Our body language, you know, I get my body language could be my wife will tell me uh, something. She'll say that I will say something, but my body language is saying something different. Now I may say yes, but my body language is like no. <laughs> and so it's like thanks be unto God that God helps us uh, through those things and begin to help us to see that. And I was sharing with Makiba, I was sharing with her that there is a level when God himself will come to each one of us and God will give us the truth. Man, God will give you the truth. When God speaks the truth to us, and we know that when we hear the truth, truth hurts. 
How many know that? How many know that truth hurts? Uh, put in the chat, wave your hand or whatever. Truth hurts. But what should we do when we hear the truth and it hurts? We should embrace it. So when you hear the truth and it hurts you, it's for you to embrace it. In other words, it's for us to change. And so when God reveals truth to any last one of us, it is for the purpose of healing us. Yes. And so whatever, of course, God reveals to us as men and women, he wants to heal us from those things. Yes. And so we know that his truth, it has a purpose, you know, it has a purpose to help us to be able to grow. And so God wants you to be able to know that man, when he gives you and I the truth of his word, we know the Bible says, according to John, that man, the truth will make us free. When we know the truth and knowing that word is genosco, that means to be intimately acquainted with the truth. And he says that you will be made free. So in other words, he wants us to embrace that truth. And it's like, you know, Michael Jackson sang the song, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. And I'm asking him to change his ways. And, and so, ma'am, sometimes when we get that mirror as men and God begins to show us ourselves, uh, we do what Adam did in the garden. We run away, you know, he, and so he, we hide ourselves from God. And God began to say even to Adam, where are you? God knew where Adam was. It wasn't like, you know, God was asking a question because he didn't know where Adam was. It wasn't a geographical location he was referencing. He wanted Adam to understand and recognize, where are you spiritually, son? Yeah, where yeah, are you? Because the yeah. connection yeah. between you and I has been breached and has yeah. been broken. Yeah. And so God began to share uh, uh, this word with me. And of course, I, I've shared it with uh, my wife. And he, he, he talked about me. So God, I mean, when God talks about me or he reveals something to us about us, like I said, it's for the purpose to help us. It's a for the purpose for us to be healed. And so I heard this word, high strong. I'm just, this is just my intro. High strong. And that word high strong actually means nervous and easily upset. And uh, it means anxious. It means tense. And my wife will often say, Mike, you are so intense. And I'm like, uh, no, no, I'm not. You know, because when, when, you know, when, when God says something, yes, but I also believe that God wants us to value those, the voice of our wives right. or the voice of our parents right. or the voice of a good friend or a good yeah. sister or a good brother. Uh, just value their voice when yeah. they begin to say something because they on the outside looking in. Yeah. It's just like, you know, women, you guys do this and men, we do this too. Uh, like if it's a woman, you, you know, she come out in the restroom and she got, you know, some uh, 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 toilet tissue on shoe. You will be like, uh, such, you know, you know, you want to, you're not going to let her walk around. A good friend not going to let somebody, even if you don't know her or him, you will tell that individual, you know, as men would say, zip up your flat. You know, that's what we are saying. We're not going to allow you as a brother to walk around like that because we care for you. Right. And so when God began to say that about me, I was like, oh, that ouch, that, 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 that hurt. And uh, another movie reference is, if you guys ever seen Major Pain with uh, Damon Wayans, and uh, uh, the woman had said all these words about him, and one word in particular, she said he was frigid. And he was like, out of all the words, he's like, I ain't frigid. And because it struck a chord in his heart and his mind because he, he knew that that was truth that she was giving unto him. That yes, he was frigid. And so men, when God began to tell us about ourselves, embrace what he is saying about because he wants to change that. He wants to change your trajectory and begin to help you not to be that anyway anymore. Or if your spouse or your parent or a close friend begin to say some things, it's like, man, what we need to do is actually uh, allow those words that they say, just, you know, take them into uh, consideration. You know, you need to take those words into consideration. My wife may say things about me. Now, I may not see the things that she's saying. And sometimes you don't see the things that the other people are saying because Remember, you're on the inside looking out. They're on the outside 
looking in. And so God began to deal with me about that, you know, and not to be anxious and not to be tense and, and different things like that. Like, Mike, you just, you know, and so I'm like, okay, God, you know, help me. And so I just want to give you some uh, uh, things for us as men. How do we become men of righteousness? Amen. How do we become men of righteousness? And I have the acronym BASE. B-A-S-E. BASE. B-A-S-E. We have to have a BASE. Uh, the first uh, letter or the first word in uh, 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 this acronym, BASE, is BELIEVE. Remember, the Bible says that uh, uh, according to uh, Genesis, when he said, and he believed God. And God accounted it to him for righteousness or as righteousness. And so we have to believe. In other words, men of God, we have to begin to believe. And to believe, uh, believe actually means to consider, to be true or honest, uh, to accept the word or evidence of, to accept something as true or genuine. And so we have to believe. Of course, the Bible teaches us that in order for us to be uh, uh, members of the kingdom of God, to be kingdom citizens, the Bible says for us, we must confess with our mouth and believe what? In our hearts yeah. that Christ was raised from the dead. So we have to believe people of God. And so I also believe means to have a firm or wholehearted religious conviction or persuasion to regard the existence of God as a fact. And so we must believe, we must regard the existence of God as a fact. And so that helps us to become a part of the family of God. Amen. When you and I believe, it helps you become a part of the family of God. Yeah. And so the Bible says this, he says that in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 5 verse 21, he said, He made Christ who knew no sin to judicially be sin on our behalf so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. And so we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're not righteous in and of yourself. We are made righteous because of God and because of the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. And so we knew that God had that in his mind. He had that plan in his mind that Adam and Eve, when they did what they did, it wasn't like God, like you and I, we have to go back to the drawing board. No, God already had set in his mind what he was going to do, how he was going to redeem us back to himself. And so he wants us as men to know and for us not to be afraid when the Father God comes to us, when he begins to share with us about ourselves, he wants us to recognize and know that man, I want to help you. I want to heal you. Yeah. I want to make you whole. I don't want you to be afraid of me. And so we have this thing, even with our children, no matter what it is, if it's good, if it's bad, is it ugly, you still can come to us Amen. and tell us whatever. You know what? Yeah, as a parent, yes, you may be upset or what have you, but it's like, you know what? I love my son. I love my daughter, just like the Father God loves us. And so he wasn't taken aback by what uh, Adam did or any of us done, but he, he has already paid the price for our past, our present, and our future sins. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then the, the next one, the next word is accountability. Amen. A lot of times people have a, uh, 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 they feel like accountability is a bad word, and it's not. Accountability is, it just means uh, the quality of state of being accountable. Just like on our jobs, if you work any job, you have to be accountable for your time. Yes, and so if they say we start at 8 a.m. to whatever time, you need to be there at 8 a.m. You got to be accountable for your time. And so as men, as the people of God, we have to be accountable for our time. And so accountability is uh, one of these men of God, his name was Graham Pitt, he said it's not accountability, it's calling you up. It's not policing you. It's calling you up from a place of lowliness to a place of where you should be. Yeah. You know, that it's calling you up. The Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places. So accountability is actually calling you up like, man, as a son, as a daughter, yeah. I'm calling you up that, man, you are 
seated in heavenly places. You are not down here. You're not in Lullabar. You are seated in heavenly places. So God wants you to stay in that place. And even in uh, the accountability that we have, we know that the person of the Holy Spirit, he is our number one accountability partner. Uh, David said in Psalms 51, I love Psalms 51, he says that, uh, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgression. That was David being accountable as a man. Yeah. That we have to be accountable for the things that we do and the things that we say. So he was being accountable to God. When the prophet Nathan came to him and began to give him an analogy, he began to let him know and begin to show him. And he said, you are this man that has done that. And then David had penned the 51st division of Psalms. And we know that is one of the great songs that he has penned and begin to let us know and recognize that, that we must begin to ask God and be accountable to him and then accountable to somebody else. You need to be accountable to uh, a, a brother in, in the Lord or, or a sister in the Lord. Be accountable to somebody. Yeah. Say for instance, you know, we have friends and brothers and different things like that. Man, I want I want to be accountable to you. Say for instance, like, man, I want to, I'm, 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 I'm believing God that I'm going to lose some weight. Don't don't be like okay. I'm gonna lose a hundred pounds. I want to lose a hundred pounds. That's a good goal. Start with five pounds. Right, right. Do not mess yourself up. Like right. I'm leaving God for a hundred pounds. Yes, you are gonna get to the hundred pounds. But how about we start with the five? Because if you start with the five, it will encourage you. Like oh man, I lost five. I'm, oh right, I'm gonna lose five more then. Amen. And then in increments, right. and you be accountable to that individual. You say like man, I want you. I want to be accountable to you about. You know, me losing this way, you know, like, man, did you, you so you talk to him as your accountability partner. Did you go exercise today? Yep, yep. You got to begin to ask those questions. Yep. And so that's what accountability partners do. Yep. My wife, I'm accountable to her. My children, I'm accountable to them. My church, I'm accountable to them as well. James 5 says this. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So we must begin to become accountable to God and to each other. Amen. That way, when you're accountable to that individual, yeah. man, that will keep you on the straight and narrow. Yeah. You know, when you know that somebody is like, because somebody watching you, whether you know it or not, anyway, yeah, they're going to be watching you. But if you're accountable to somebody, it's like, man, I'm, I want you to hold me accountable. Like, man, you know, I'm so, I'm used to spinning, you know, or overspinning. And sometimes as men, we can emotionally spin. We can do various things. We can allow, uh, and I, I like football, nothing except wrong with sports and football, but we can put that those things in the place of God and God want to spend some time with us, but we'll like we'll decide, and I, this happened to me, like man his spirit was, was beckoning me and I didn't understand it at that particular time and I thought it was like, well, well I'm just going to get something to eat, I'm going to go get some food so we allow food, we allow various things to, to uh, take the place of God, and it's like God is like, no, I want you to come into my parents my presence, but we'll think that, okay, man, it's something different, it's something else. Yeah. And so we have to be sensitive yeah. to the voice of the Holy Spirit Amen. and just ask him, like, man, God, what, do you, what is it that you want me to do? Amen. What is it that you want me to say? And so we must confess. And then the next one is strive. We must strive. And that word strive means to endeavor. It means to endeavor. In other words, it's like I'm, I'm pressing toward the goal. Remember Paul said these words, he said, you know, not that I have obtained, not that I don't count myself that. I, in other words, I haven't made it yet. I have not arrived. You know, and some people will look like, man, man, I wish I could pray like Prophet is Jew. You know, I wish I could teach the word like Pastor James. It's like, no, no, no. God don't want us to compare ourselves with nobody. He wants you to have your own individual relationship with him. Now, it's good to emulate these people of God. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can talk to God how you talk to God. Yeah. Now, some people may talk to God like, whoa, yo, what up, God? They may talk to him like that. But God understands them. Yeah. God understands this is how they relate to him. Like, God, what's going on? What's happening? And different things like that. And God is not like, God is not like, you disrespected me. <laughs> because you're like, yo, God, what up? No, I don't believe God is rigid like that. 
I don't think he's frigid, meaning to be cold or anything like that. I believe that God, man, he loves us so much. And if that's how your relationship with him is, I think it's fine. And he'll, he'll probably say back to you, hey, what's up with you, Mike? <laughs> You know, and that's just how he is because if we listen, just like if you said to God, God, I love you. If you listen, you will hear him say, I love you too. Yeah. He'll say, I love you back. Yeah. <laughs> and so when we strive, the Bible says this, uh, uh, striving is uh, the word where we get our word uh, athlete. It's uh, in the Greek, it's athleso, athletos. And so it means to contend in competitive games. So it means to contend in competitive games. And Paul was talking about contending for a prize. And so he was talking about, man, I'm pressing toward that prize that's in Christ. I'm pressing towards righteousness. I'm pressing toward that because that is my goal. My goal is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so the Bible says that in Luke 13, he says, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. And so Timothy said, it admonished us, says, and if a man also strive for mastery, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. And so we must begin to strive. We must begin to endure. We must begin to endeavor uh, uh, to keep, as the Bible says, that endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And so we must endeavor as men endeavor to be righteous and to stay righteous and we know that our righteousness it comes from God and we must make sure that we endure that's another that's the last one as it relates to base endure and the definition of endure it means to to remain firm under suffering or misfortune without yielding Though it is difficult. Amen. I like that. Mm -hmm. To endure, it means to remain firm under suffering or misfortune without yielding, though it is difficult. And a lot of times, different things happen in our lives, uh, even as men. And sometimes as men, maybe we have not had uh, a model of manhood. Wow. And so a lot of times what we'll do is... We'll, we'll, we'll look at the people around us. Uh, we'll look at the, the, those in our neighborhoods. We'll look at the drug dealers. We'll look at, and we'll think that that is manhood, and that's not. You know, we'll look at, you know, like, man, I'm going to be, uh, I'm a conquest. I'm going to see, like, I forgot the basketball player's name there. He's like, he slept with a thousand women. Like, as if that is the epitome of manhood. Just because you was, just because they was just, you know, uh, not wise enough to not sleep with, <laughs> with you, and not understand it like, man, you know, this guy has been with uh, uh, Sue Jane and everybody else. It's like, no, that is not biblical manhood. Biblical manhood is for us to walk in righteousness. Biblical manhood is for us to to love justice and to seek mercy and to call on the name of God. That was bi true biblical manhood is. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for you and I. Like, okay, man, I'm a I'm a I'm gonna conquer this woman and I'm a you know that's uh, that's that's not how God wants us to be as men. God wants us to be as men that we will be because God actually wanted us to be a representative of him as men. There is only one person or, or, or us as beings, as, as human beings, we are the only beings as men sharing a name with God and that's Father. No other beings share a name with God but us as men. And so when a lot of times, even as, 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 as women, sometimes you're your 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 horizontal relationship with your father in the earth can be distorted with your vertical relationship with the father God. And so because maybe my daddy was not in place, maybe he, you know, maybe he left my mama and he didn't, you know, he didn't pay no child support, he wasn't there, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know what? We have a father in heaven. Mm -hmm. that he loves us so very much. Maybe he wasn't there like he should have been. 
And so God will put, you know, he'll put fathers in our path. Just like for me, he put fathers, men, uh, uh, men of God that was serving God, that I could, that was modeling uh, uh, manhood, that was modeling righteousness. So God began to place those things. And so you got to look out and see, you know, is this in your church? Uh, there, there could be a man that's there, you know, and I, I mean, I watch uh, other men just like I'm sure other men watch me, and I see how, like, man, how they treat their wives and different things like that. It's like, oh, man, that's good. I saw this one guy, you know, on the train, and his wife was getting off the train. You know, he came to pick her up. He gets out of the car. He waits on her. If it's raining, he has an umbrella, and he opens the door so she can get in. Yeah. I'm like, you know what, God, listen, Pastor Jane, I'm like, look, I want to model that. I want to be just like that. I, don't, I didn't know him, but I observed him. I saw what he was doing for his wife. And so God will put people in your way and just all you got to do is begin to watch and see wow. like, oh man, I wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start modeling that. I'm going to do that for my wife. I'm going to do that for my daughter so she'll know that she ain't got to carry groceries. <laughs> That, no, 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 no. If I'm around, if her brother is around, her brother know that, no, nope, your sister shouldn't carry that. If it's a bag, no, she shouldn't carry that. Because it has been my, I don't even tell my sons, I don't even tell them anything like that. They just see it because when it's modeled, they'll just practice what's being modeled. Come on. And so as men, if we allow God to begin to, to deal with our hearts, and we allow God to give us a base for righteousness, then we'll recognize and know, like, listen, man, I want to be just like God. Yeah. So in every area of my life, I have not made it. I, I missed the mark. I have failed. I have not listened to uh, uh, the words that came out of Makiba's mouth. And as Makiba, she would say certain things about, you know, she could say, say, say she could say something about her sister, like, Mike, be careful, watch that person. Like, that's your sister Susie. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So as men, we have to listen to our wives. Don't, yeah. don't listen to that commercial that said, don't listen to your wife. Listen, listen to your wife because I believe it's, it, it's the voice of God as well. I believe God will visit us himself and tell us about ourselves. But I also God believe that God will use individuals to help us to become more like him. Man, marriage is not, uh, 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 it's, it's marriage is actually meant to make you holy. I mean, if you, it's, it's, I mean, it's one thing to, you know, like, that's my girlfriend, that's my boyfriend, but when you get married to an individual, you stand with an individual, and they seeing all your everything, you like, oh, okay, all right, oh, you do that, uh, you know, and so it's, it's to, it's to help us, it's to mold us, it's to shape us, and so it's, it's helping me to become holy because who knows me like my spouse? Right. Who knows me, you know, you know, like who knows like when I get up in the morning how I am. You know, you don't know that. She knows. Right. And so it's like if I'm getting up like a grumpy bear, then it's like, babe, what is wrong with you? Yeah. And a lot of times women are like, help you guys. It's 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 not that, you know, he's angry with you. He's actually angry about something else that has nothing to do with you. Mm. A lot of times as men. You know, my wife says she could tell when something's going on with me because my forehead will wrinkle yeah. up. Yeah. And so it's like, I, I, I don't see it because I can't see my forehead wrinkle up. And so it's like, I, be, I could be upset about, I don't have enough money to pay this bill. Uh -huh. Come on, tell me. And it's like, I'm like, and so my wife was like, man, you know, instead of me, she, she, she already going to feel it anyway. Instead of us going to our spouse, or instead of us going to a good friend, an accountability partner, instead of us going to our mom or our dad, so what we'll do is we'll either hide like Adam did, uh -huh. we'll hide behind something, you know, you'll hide behind uh, 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 drugs, you'll hide behind sex, you'll hide behind, you know, power, money, love, sex, all those things, you'll hide behind those things, or you'll, you know, you'll use anger. And so as men, sometimes, you know, God has given us emotions, and there's nothing wrong with emotions, but the word emotion actually means, the etymology of the word emotion, it means to remove, it means to displace. And so what the enemy wants us to do as men, he wants you to jap out and begin to scream and yell and just throw everything 
uh, be like a caveman and beating on the wall and you know just stuff that's not like that's not righteous right and so if we just allow god to begin to help us to manage our emotions then uh, those things won't, you know, have us, you know, removed of this place. You will be able to uh, uh, actually articulate what's really going on with us. Because a lot of times, now me and my wife, we've had, I believe in counseling, I believe in professional counseling, I believe you should go to counseling, I believe you should go to it as much as you can. You know, whether you're married or you've been married five years, ten years, still go. Go to couples therapy, get individual therapy. All those things I believe is good and there's nothing wrong with it because a lot of times people shun at that and be like, oh, no, you, you know, they're crazy. No, they're not crazy. You're crazy for not getting help. Come on. <laughs> and you need help. It's just like there's a fire and you have a fire extinguisher to put the fire out, but you don't utilize it. Right. What, what sense is the, the fire extinguisher was made to put out a fire? Yeah. Why wouldn't you use it? And so God has placed these professional counselors in our lives to help us to be able to grow. And so myself and Prophet Makiba, uh, um, the, the, the counselor would say, you know, Mike, it's your damn. If I didn't want to speak, she like, it's your damn. I'm getting paid anyway, whether you want to talk or not. <laughs> it, Mike, it's your damn. That's what she always said. And so uh, she began to teach us and she began to, to, to help us to not cop out. You know, she wouldn't allow me to say, I don't know. Because a lot of times, and, and, and not, not just men only, but women can do this, you know, you know, and even for your sons, uh, uh, they're like, I don't know, you know, why you, boy, why'd you do that? I don't know. Listen, if we just sit long enough with God, he will tell you why you did what you did. Uh -huh. He'll tell you, he'll, He'll let the mirror be shown to you, yes. and you'll be able to see, like, this is why I was acting that way. Why did you act out, Mike? Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why did you, uh, 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 you know, sometimes as men, we, we race. <laughs> we race the other cars that's, that's like, I'm not gonna allow him to beat me. Now, if I'm with my wife, I know I can't race, Pastor James. <laughs> But if I'm by myself, I know like, oh man, you know, he's got ahead of me. What is that all about, bro? You know, it's like, yeah. what is that? And a lot of times, you know, we deal as men, we deal with pride. Mm. And so we gotta ask God, man, help us even in that. And so we know that pride is not being righteous. We know that pride is not a base for righteousness. And so we have must, you know, God said he resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. And so God wants us as men to begin to walk in the spirit of humility yes. and just allow him to deal with that pride because, man, pride is like you thinking you 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 right and you're wrong. Pride is, you know, uh, me saying like, you know, man, she needs to get over it. That is pride. No, no, no. You about to get put out. <laughs> You can buy, you know, it's like, listen, I, there is stages, man, I'm going to tell you this, there's stages. You can be in the outhouse, that is the worst stage you can be in, the doghouse, or the back porch. I've been in all three before. And so it's like, I had to work my way from the outhouse, you will never, ever, ever, ever want to be in the outhouse. The outhouse is nasty. And then, you know, the doghouse, okay, I'm, I'm inching closer, then the back porch, you know, and then maybe she'll put you on the couch or whatever, and then, you know, you're back in good graces. And so it's like, because of pride, you know, pride will say, man, you need to get over it, but humility says that I empathize with you, I yeah. see you, yeah. Yeah. and I want you to be better. Yeah. So that's what, you know, God wants us to be as men. Yeah. When we have that humility, it's like, no, I, man, babe, I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I did not mean that. And I, I've said things from my head as a man, Pastor. I've said me and McKeever been together for almost 25 years now. And um, we was on the train, and I just said to her, that's on you. And she was like, oh, in her mind, probably, she was like, I got to get my own car. I, gotta get, I was like, oh, oh, I didn't mean that. You know, instead of me speaking from my heart, now, McKee was going to visit one of um, 
we're good uh, friends, one of the sisters in the Lord of ours. And instead of me saying like, man, babe, I want to be with you. Uh, I could drop you all to our house, then go down the street and pick you up. I said, out of my head, that's on you. That's not what I meant, Pastor James. I did not mean that. I'm like, oh, baby, baby, please, please. I'm so sorry. I did not mean that's on you. Right. And so that's what we'll do as men. We'll speak from our heads uh -huh. and not our hearts. So God wants to teach us as men, men, begin to speak from your heart. Because I'm telling you, the results that you will get uh, when we speak from our hearts to our wives, to our sons, to our daughters, and if you made a promise to them, keep that promise as a man because they're looking at that. If you promise like, okay, son, daughter, at church, I'm going to take you to get some ice cream or whatever. Listen, keep your promises to your children. I don't care what happens. It's like, no, I got to take them some ice cream. I remember one of these men of God, he, he God blessed him, you know, with a plane. He, he would speak all over the world. And he said he always wanted to make sure that he got home, that he could tuck his children in. Yeah. And so I thought that was so honorable yeah. as a man that even though that he was doing the work of God, just like Moses. Moses, do you not know Moses almost died? God was about to kill Moses because he did not circumcise his sons. He was so busy in ministry. Come on. Listen, man, you so busy like on these platforms and da 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 da. You know what? Listen, your first ministry is your house. Yeah. It's your wife. It's your children. That's your first ministry. That is your base of righteousness. And so it's like his wife had to circumcise his sons. But God was about to smoke Moses. And he had called Moses to bring the children of Israel to the promised land. But God about to kill him because he didn't do what God had required. And his wife was like calling him a bloody man and all those things. It's like, oh my God, he was so focused on those things. He wasn't accountable. And his father's just... His father-in-law, Jethro, yeah. had to also help him yeah. as a man, like, man, what you're doing, you are going to kill yourself. Right. That's what he was saying, literally. Right. You're going to kill yourself and all these people with you. You're not even going to make it to the promised land. Right. Because you are staying up from sundown, you need to get some people to come in to help you. Amen. You know, you need to just have that accountability. You need to have that, you know, you have to, you have to be able to endure. You have to be able to strive, endeavor to get them there where they need to go. And so as men and as men of righteousness, yeah. we have to have that base for uh, uh, righteousness. We have to have that base for right living. We really do. We have to really begin to ask God, man, to help us to speak his word to help us to begin to talk to our, our to our families and, and not not get upset, you know, when some don't go our way. Yeah. Sometimes as men we can throw tantrums when we don't get what we want. And God had to deal even with myself. It's like I wanted what I wanted and I wanted it now. Yeah. That's pride too. Yeah. It's like because sometimes you can want what you want and you can want it now and it can cause destruction to come into your life. Amen. And so you have to ask God, like, listen, you know what? No, no, no. I'm, I got to have some self-control as a man. And, you know, it is this, is this, you know, I, I like cookies. Is this, uh, is the, if I eat the whole bag of Oreo cookies, is this going to mess with my, uh, my summer figure? You know, is it going to mess with my summer body, Pastor James? It's going to mess with my summer body, you know? Right now, uh, uh, winter is coming, so my winter body is okay. <laughs> my summer body needs a little, you know what I'm saying? It just needs a little help, y'all. It needs a little help. You know, and so, I mean, you know, I can work on it in the wintertime and be prepared for the summertime. Or I can just keep continue on eating all doubles. And I, I don't just eat Oreos. I eat double stuff, triple stuff. Oreos. I mean, if you're going to go big, go big. Go, you know, if you're going to eat Oreos, Eat them with the double stuff, the triple stuff. Don't eat the little, you know, I'm just messing with you guys. But listen, it's just, we just got to be transparent, you know, as men, you know, and just begin to, because a lot of times, uh, other men that see us and the people of God that see us, and they, like I said, they think we got it all together. It's like, man, sometimes, you know, you just can't, you know, like, man, I can't even 
you know, barely get it, you know, I can't barely get it right sometimes. Amen. And so when they begin to see us and we begin to share with them, like our life story, man, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I, I don't care if you go tell somebody because God already knows. God already knows, like, man, I already repented to him and asked him. And he throws my sins as far as the east is from the west in a sea of forgetfulness. So you go broadcast it if you want to. That's fine because when, once I know that God has forgiven me and I have been redeemed and the blood has made me right, it's okay. I can share with you. It's a testimony for me. Yeah. Now, it's gossip for you. <laughs> but it's a testimony for me. So go ahead and gossip if you want to. You can gossip whatever. Yeah, Mike did this. He did that. That's fine. But you know what? It's under the blood. Amen. And when it's under the blood, I'm telling you, people, got, I don't care what they say. They can look at you and be like, man, you don't look like when I, I was growing up. And I'm going I'm to say this. I'm going to give it close. When I was growing up, they're like, my, he is just bad. I stayed in trouble. He, I had, bad was my name. I mean, I, so many whoopers. I, I got so many whoopers, I got used to the bell. And I just would cry so they would stop, you know, doing it. It's like, and I'll tell my cousins and my brother, that didn't hurt. That didn't hurt, like, because I was, I mean, I got like, oh, it's another whooping, whatever. But God, and you know what? It was the reason why I was like that when I was growing up. Uh, it was because of divorce. Because my mom and dad uh, was divorced. My mom left. And my grandma raised us. My grandmother raised me and my brothers. And she raised a whole bunch of other people. And so my mom had to leave because my daddy was a knucklehead. He was abusive. And so, uh, man, that is so, it's like, and that's what, I mean, I, I hate uh, domestic violence. Amen. I really do. I am not uh, 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 a person, and my wife is not that type of person either. And so we, I saw that growing up. You know, I didn't see my dad physically hit my mom, but I saw him physically hit other women. And so I saw the results of it. I saw uh, uh, her bloody lip. I was six years old when my mom left. I remember when a cab came to pick her up. And I did not see my mom for 10 years. Wow. And I acted a fool growing up. I stayed in trouble because I missed my mother. Mm, that, was <laughs> that is so personal for me. Yeah. Because I miss my mom. And as men, a lot of times it's because you're missing something. You're missing a mom. You're missing your dad. And so as men, we begin to act out. We begin to do things that's not righteous. And we begin to, man, just destructive things. I mean, oh my God. I mean, I, 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 if I had time to tell you the stories, I would tell you the story. But I've got time. <laughs> and I'm telling you, but I want to just, you know, just speak to you. Those of you there, those of you that are here, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to just offer you Christ. Amen. Just want to give you that chance, that opportunity. That man, if you need Christ, is the base for our relationship with Him. He is that base. I mean, He is that firm foundation. And if you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says, according to Romans ten nine and ten, all we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Christ was raised from the dead. He said, then we'll be saved. And then you know what? Heaven is having a party on your behalf. Yeah. The Bible says that heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents yeah. and they throw a party. They have a fiesta for those of us that are Latina and Latinos. They have a fiesta. And so God knows yeah. just where, wherever you are. I mean, you could be at home. You could be in your car. Wherever you are, all you have to do is like, Lord, come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I believe that you died. I believe that you rose again. I believe that you're coming back. And then you're in a good Bible-believing church. This is a good church here. You can come. You can be a part of this church. Uh, uh, and just, I'm telling you, people of God, that you'll become disciple and learn more about Jesus Christ. Because he loves us with an everlasting love. He loves you so much that he died on the cross as the substitution. You, it should have been you. It should have been me. But he died on our behalf. And I'm so grateful he did. I'm so glad that God is God and Mike is not God. Yeah. Because I might not got God up on the cross. I might have been, I might have been fighting. Like, you know, they might hit me. I might have just hit them back. You know what I'm saying? You know, they, oh, okay, oh, it's, it's on. 
<laughs> and so I thank God. So I'm going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for, man, God, these are your people. Father, we pray, God, that you would begin to bless God. God, we ask, Father God, that you would begin to touch each and every man, Father, that's here, Father God, each and every son, God, God, each and every daughter, Father. God, we lift them up unto you, Father. God, you said when my mother and our father forsake us, you will take us up. So, Father, we praise you even now, Father God, for beginning to bless each and every last one of these, your people, Father. We thank you, Father God, those that's watching. Oh, God, by way of virtually, Father, we pray, oh, Father God, that even while they're in their rooms, Father, that you will begin to minister unto them, Father God, that you will heal, Father God, the little boy, that you will heal the little girl, Father God, God, that you will heal them, oh, Father God, oh, God, the hurt, the pain, the disappointment that they felt when they was growing up, oh, Father God, God, in Jesus' name, God, we pray, God, even now, Father God, God, that you will just begin to heal them, oh, God, oh, God, even in their masculinity, God. God, we pray, oh, Father God, that you will heal them, God, in their womanhood, Father God. God, we pray, oh, Father God, for each and every little girl and every little boy, Father God. Oh, God, that may have been molested, Father. God, we lift them up unto you, God. We pray, oh, God, in Jesus' name, God. I'm not so. That's not the end of their life, oh, Father God. They will not be defined by the things that they have experienced growing up. But, God, we praise you, oh, God, that now are we your sons, God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but God, we know, God, when you shall appear, God, we will be just like you. So, Father in heaven, God, we thank you, God, that we are just like you. In Jesus' name, God, we pray, oh God, oh God, that you will touch the minds and the hearts of, of men everywhere, God. Those that, oh God, that may be incarcerated, God, begin to change their hearts, God, begin to change their minds, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Oh God, save them, oh God. Oh God, deliver them, oh God. Oh God, for recidivism, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Oh God, we praise you, God. For these, your people, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Oh God, have mercy, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. Touch them, oh God. Everybody, wherever they are, God. Oh God, we praise you, God. We worship you, God. We honor you, God. We give you praise, God. God, we lift up every son, God, unto you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to bless them, oh God. Oh, God, we pray, oh, Father God, that you begin to, to trust their hearts, oh, God. Even the sons, oh, God, whose fathers may have, have promised them things and to promise them that they were going to come and get them, promise them that they were going to hang out with them, oh, God. God, we pray, oh, God, that you would touch their little hearts, oh, God. Even the daughters, oh, God, begin to touch their hearts, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Father, we bless you. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God.